The Antichrist will not be so called. Otherwise, he would have no followers. He will wear no red tie. Described as a fallen angel. As a prince of this world, whose business it is to tell us that there is no other world. His logic is simple. If there is no heaven, there is no hell. If there is no hell, there is no sin. If there is no sin, there is no judge. And if there is no judgment, then evil is good, and good is evil. But above all these descriptions, our Lord tells us that he will be so much like himself that he will deceive even the elect. And certainly no devil that we have ever seen in picture books could deceive the elect. How will he come in this new age to win followers to his religion? He will come disguised as the great humanitarian. He will talk peace, prosperity, and plenty, not as means to lead us to God, but as ends in themselves. He will write books on the new idea of God to suit the way people live. Make men shrink in shame if their fellow men say they are not broad-minded and liberal. He will identify tolerance with indifference to right and wrong. He will foster more divorces under the disguise that another partner is vital. He will invoke religion to destroy religion. He will even speak of Christ and say that he was the greatest man who ever lived. His mission, he will say, will be to liberate men from the servitudes of superstition and fascism, which he will never define. But in the midst of all his seeming love for humanity, his glib talk of freedom and equality, he will have one great secret which he will tell no one. He will not believe in God. And because his religion will be brotherhood without the fatherhood of God, he will deceive even the elect. He will set up a counter-church, which will be the ape of the church, because he, the devil, is the ape of God. It will be the mystical body of the Antichrist, that will in all externals resemble the church as the mystical body of Christ. In desperate need for God, he will induce modern man in his loneliness and frustration to hunger more and more for membership in his community that will give man enlargement of purpose without any need of personal amendment and without the admission of personal guilt. These are days in which the devil has been given a particularly long rope. Evil hour, when the shepherd may be struck and the sheep dispersed. Has the church made preparations for just such a dark night in the decree of the Holy Father outlining the conditions on which a papal election may now be held outside of the city of Rome. Because the signs of our times point to a struggle between absolutes, we may expect the future to be a time of trial. For two, and God will not allow unrighteousness to become eternal. He permits revolution, disintegration, and chaos to come as reminders that our thinking has been wrong. Our dreams have been unholy. Reason why a crisis must come is in order to prevent a false identification of the church and the world. Our Lord intended that those who were his followers would be different in spirit from those who were not. But this line of demarcation has been blotted out. Instead of black and white, there's only a blur. Mediocrity and compromise characterize the lives of many Christians. They read the same novels as modern pagans, educate their children in the same godless way, allow pagan practices to creep into family life, such as divorce and remarriage. There's no longer the conflict and the opposition which ought to characterize us. We are influencing the world less than the world influences us. There is no apartness, 
we who were sent out to establish a center of health have caught the disease and therefore have lost the power to heal. And since the gold is mixed with an alloy, the entirety must be thrust into the furnace that the dross may be burned away. And the value of the trial will be to set us apart. Evil catastrophe must come. Affirm our fidelities and state on whose side we stand. Our quantity indeed will decrease, but our quality will increase. 